Hi, welcome to One Word a Day. I'm Sophie, your pilot into the universe of Chinese. Let's continue our exploration in one more Chinese impression a day. And we're going to continue to do with three character Chinese formations um, in October. Okay, so 转基因 is today's expression. It's a translation of a new technology in the 20th, 20th century, I guess. It started in 20th century. So it's generically modified this concept. So Chinese use ch three characters uh, to match up to this, I mean, pretty modern uh, new technology. Um, so ji yin is, can you hear ji yin? It sounds like a ji, right? So because Chinese doesn't need to uh, change uh, its form grammatically. Um, so ji yin can be a noun, an adjective, or you know, even uh, anything like an English expression is generically, generic, <laughs> genetically, gosh. Okay, um, it become an adverb, right? The Chinese have no such issue. We just put in what it is, just gene over there. And then, I mean, whoever does the translation backwards can have to do the gra grammatically correct way. Um, so this is the flexibility of Chinese language. Language ji yin is a translation of ji, and then zhuan. Um, you see the translation I put it here. It means turn. Um, actually, yes, make a turn. Turn itself. If like you are driving, you want to make a turn, zhuan would be you. Chinese would say zuo zhuan or yu zhuan. Turn left or turn right. So this zhuan definitely means a turn. Uh, now Chinese put this turn into connect with ji yin to make it mean um, modified. Um, so that's something interesting. Like I, I'm sure this is a recent translation of already in a contemporary uh, simplified Chinese context. And when we have this technology, Chinese language have to respond to this, to capture this new concept, right? So somebody picked zhuan um, to, to like in front of ji yin means means this gene is turned somehow um and i would imagine this turn actually means transform uh, because uh, chinese as a language to express change to express you know one is not the other uh when chinese are expressing that concept uh the language would present an icon that you know means something and flip it or turn it or rotate it on this 2D frame to mean it's changed. Um, so I guess culturally um, in this language, this turning, this uh, visually turning, or in this case, drag means in a physical world, it, it is turn or rotate actually. Um, this could apply to change or transform. Therefore, it can correspond to the English modified because English have to be very specific, right? We see, we say gene genetically modified. We, we wouldn't say otherwise. Um, that means the exactly same concept, but we wouldn't use any other word because this is this is kind of English set phrase already, right? It's GMO and Chinese correspond by zhuan ji yin. <clears throat> okay, let's go down to the capture level. So zhuan came off left and right side. The left side means um, the wheels. And you can see this is the spoke of the, the wheels, the circle. And then there are two, I call it the stoppers. I don't know exactly the term, but this is the axis of the wheel that's you know installed on. And then this is wheel itself. Uh, I mean, of course it's not physically correct. The wheel have to be kind of perpendicular. Therefore the spoke have to go through the, the disc, right? At the middle of the disc. Um, but to visually represent that, the wheel is kind of a flip like this way. So we can see, okay, there's a wheel in the middle. Also. And then the two stoppers uh, on that axis. So the wheel doesn't slide off the axis. Okay. This is the, uh, the car 
cart um, or the ancient wheeled vehicle. And then the right side, we have the three finger hand symbol. We have the indicator to mean exactly one inch below the hand, which gives you a sense of um, kind of a technicality of this motion. That means you have to handle something following the rules uh, because this is the rule one inch down uh, of pulse reading, ancient medical practice of pulse reading. You have to do one inch down of your wrist to touch exactly here. Um, and that extend into other kind of practice, not just medical, uh, means you have to do something correctly in a certain way, uh, kind of a methodologically, <laughs> okay. Um, and then the top is, you see another circle was uh, connected with a little knot um, at, uh, at the end and with this kind of a trident looking thing. That to me is a type of uh, farming tool because trident represent a plant uh, or yeah, anything growing. And then this, this is, well, actually I take, take back. Now I recall um, this, this whole thing is um, a type of, um, I guess, a spinning or fabric making process. So um, in ancient times, it's a cottage industry, of course. It's uh, before the industrial revol uh, revolution, I guess, before machine take over making clothes or cloth, right? Um, it's a home industry that you have to spinning the yarn and then weave it. So the whole industry was carried by like every everyday life in, in, in every household. They have to close your family, right? That falls on the women of the house. Um, and then this is a type of, um, um, I guess a spinning. It makes sense like this is fabric. I mean, not a fabric, but plant. So from the plant, imagine cotton, right? The most commonly used uh, plant-based fabric source, uh, cotton, and going through this spinning process, it becomes something that people can use to make cloth um, in the end. Um, so the whole thing means the turning uh, of the spinning wheel. Um, so we have the wheel, which got a spin to carry out its function. And on the right side, we have the, I guess, fabric spinner, uh, to carry out the spinning and we have the hand to make sure you, you do it correctly. Um, so the whole thing, the left and right both means a sort of turning or rotation. So I guess to be more accurate, this means rotation, right? Either spinning or the, the car, the wheel turning, both are rotation motion. And eventually people don't distinguish that that much. That just means making a turn like I guess making a turn is kind of a rotation as well. Depends on how you how you see it. And making a turn means you you're uh, going through. You have a center at somewhere, and then you make a turn, turn around, kind of spinning around there, right? <laughs> so that's that's turn. And the ji in ji, uh, the whole character have you know bottom and top together. That means. Um, the building blocks of the city wall. So there is this stacking up visually, right? And the top looks like a container or basket sitting on top of this looks like a table, tabletop, right? The whole table. And then the bottom is soil. I guess the soil was used as kind of a clay or sandbag or something that forms uh, into a shape to, to, to make this, the, the walls of the ancient city. So I'm not going into more in that, but um, this stacking up visually gives you the sense of it's it's a kind of a building. So it's an ancient construction material. And that, because it is uh, kind of like a building block of the city wall, right? That turned into this abstract concept of basic because you cannot have this, not to have this foundation to have something standing up there, right? You have to have this, this base, this building blocks to, to stack up into something. So that becomes Chinese concept of the basic. Okay, element. 
I don't really have a good theory as of now, but I can tell you the two icons here, just like it shows, it means kind of enclosure. And then we have, um, this is human figure. And then it looks like this human figure got this arm spanning like that, right? Um, without this arm sticking out, that actually means imprisonment. It's a human inside, like enclosure, inside an enclosed space, right? That just visually represents somebody in a cell. Um, but now with this arm, that becomes kind of a symbolic of something. Um, this arm thing, once it added, it, it means big. So concept of big and in this enclosure, that becomes a little bit tricky um, because I can see if we if we draw this enclosure as some object we are investigating in, and then we have this concept concept of big. That means if we want to look at something, we want to take out the major factors from that thing, um, because I guess each object you can look at in many, many different ways, but um, not every way is a major way, right? There are always going to be the, the main component of something and the minor, minor, right? Kind of going like this, if we look at the, the significance of something, components inside something. So we want to go to the big one, so this big inside this enclosure means when we investigate on something, we go after the major um, factor in that thing. And that becomes element. That's my theory currently. I may update it if I find a better ex exploration. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I explore more uh, and explain it better. But right now, this is uh, my theory because yeah, without this big concept, it is imprisonment. So this thing apparently transformed this character into something totally different. And it's an abstract term, like element. How are we going to visualize an element, right? Um, but currently it means, well, it not only means element, actually, it means causation as well, um, because um, we have this in and guo. In is the cause of something, guo means the fruit of something, and the Chinese use the fruit of something uh, to mean the consequence of something, something you bear the fruit out of, right? So in is the causation as well. Um, and I guess if we can abstract something, take out the major, the big factor in that, we can kind of say, okay, that big factor contribute to um, the, the later events of what's going to happen. Um, so that way it can, you can use this, you know, this big inside the space as both the element as called, and also causation uh, concept. But I know it's a little bit <laughs> not so solid. Um, that, that's my best understanding of this character now. I mean, it's a simple carry, simple, just a few strokes, but um, what went through the language creator's mind and also the later language users, people agree on this becomes this abstract, abstract meaning of element. It's, it's, I'm sure I'm going to discover, discover it one day. Okay, so ji yin, not only it sounds like jin, but basic element is kind of a meaning, the translation of meaning as well, because jin is a basic element. It's the innate quality that um, inside the genes, you get uh, features turn on and off. It's, it's basically your control board, right? If you view humans as uh, bots. So you have a set of uh, embedded code and then some got activated, some not, but it, it is the basic element of you, of kind of, um, you know, the initial setup configuration of you when you are, you know, X work. <laughs> uh, okay, so Zhuan Ji Yin, it's Chinese uh, translation of GMO. And I think it's a succinct 
because we have to have the gene, right? And gene is translated into two characters. And if just use one more Chinese character to make this draw and just modify the concept, and um, just one more character add, and the whole thing got capture, captured. You see, in English, we use initials to make a long spelling, but frequently using the, the acronyms. This In this case, it's not an acronym, but GMO people commonly understood uh, what it is. And Chinese also pick up three characters to just capture exactly that. All right, catching to the tendency of thinking about, well, what a day we're so busy on that day.